Hello, uh, so welcome to this session on uh, this uh, particular week. Uh, it would be about uh, mostly Gaussian mixture models and I guess there are some questions, one or two questions about, uh, uh, no it's mostly, yeah one, uh, yeah it's mostly Gaussian mixture models only. Uh, so I will be talking about that. Uh, so, if you have uh, gone through the lectures, uh, there are three lectures in this week. Uh, the first one is on Gaussian mixture models. The second one is on EM algorithm. So, EM algorithm is used for solving the different parameters for getting the different parameters of uh, the Gaussian mixture model. And the last one is about a theoretical basis uh, of why the EM algorithm works. Uh, so, I think the first uh, two uh, lectures are something which are important. Uh, the last one you can of course you should of course look at but that is more about why the the theory behind why the EM algorithm works. Uh, so the, for the first two lectures and especially the first lecture is very important uh, for uh, solving the different assignments. Uh, okay, so the first question is directly from uh, one of the things that was taught in the lecture that is if we have uh, just a minute, okay. All right. Uh, so, if you have the P of Xn defined as follows, uh, where summation of you know, pi uh, summation over one to k pi k P of Xn by theta k. So, P of Xn uh, given theta k is uh, a Gaussian. Uh, so, it can be uh, some x n uh, parameterized by some mu k and some sigma k. Uh, so, in this case this becomes a Gaussian mixture model. If you consider this particular probability distribution to be a Gaussian, then this becomes a Gaussian mixture model and uh, the mixture coefficients are given by this pi k. Uh, so, if you look at the lecture, then there are two conditions that this pi k must satisfy one is this pi k must be must, must lie between uh, 0 and 1. Uh, so, if it is not lying between 0 and 1, uh, then uh, this uh, outside thing can ideally become can possibly become uh, something which is more than 1 and that you cannot ever have for a probability value and therefore, this pi k all of them must lie between 0 and 1 that is the first condition. Uh, the other condition is all of them must sum up to 1 and uh, the reason behind that is uh, this p of x n needs to be a probability distribution and therefore, if you take an integration of p of x n uh, and uh, d of uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah p of x n and d of x n. So, suppose x n takes I mean you are taking a probability distribution over all of the values that this x n can take and taking an integration over that this should be equal to 1. So, if if this is equal to 1 then the same thing should ha happen on the right hand side also. So, integration over summation of pi k p of x n given theta k uh, d of x n must be equal to 1. Now, this integration is only over x n and, and this summation is over k therefore, you can move this integral inside in which case I will I'll write it here in which case this would become summation over k pi k uh, integral of p of x n given theta k d of x n. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so this should ideally be equal to 1 if now this is actually a probability distribution this is a probability distribution over x n and you are integrating over d of x n therefore, this is indeed equal to 1 and therefore, you have summation of pi k is equal to 1. Uh, so, the last condition is also true correct. Uh, so, if you have any doubts you can stop and ask me uh, these are the two conditions that you require over your uh, mixture coefficients that you have here. Okay. Uh, so, then we have a diagram like which says that based on the density estimation of a GMM given below answer the questions 2 to 4. So, we have 3 consecutive questions based on this diagram and uh, so the first value is what is the value of k. So, if you see here it is slightly I mean these are the density function this is the probability density of the different points that have been given to you. You see here that uh, the density this is one this is probably one Gaussian density because 
if you see here if you see here then uh, we have a slight drop at these places right which means that there is a Gaussian that is sitting here you can ideally have a Gaussian that is sitting here you can also have a Gaussian that is sitting here and finally another Gaussian is sitting here so basically this is a I mean it's very difficult to tell first of all but uh, the one one way in which you can tell this is to look at these particular drops in density so whenever you see a drop in density that means that one Gaussian is probably ending there and another Gaussian is starting and you also see a drop in density at these two places and this uh, gives an idea that there are actually four Gaussians which have been used to generate this data and uh, therefore the value of k would be 4 ok. Uh, then what is the minimum value of k prime which is not equal to k where k is from the previous question for which you will get a very similar density estimation. Uh, so, uh, so one ok all the colors would change so I cannot really put different colors. So, one Gaussian density is of course here it comes from here that you cannot help the other Gaussian density you can actually put at put here one more Gaussian density which you can put is probably like this I mean it is uh, it is possible that uh, another Gaussian with this center and this covariance matrix and this covariance or variance covariance matrix has there has generated this part of the data one Gaussian has generated this part of the data the another part of the another Gaussian has generated this part of the data. So, you can have a Gaussian density I mean you can have you can think that uh, ok there it is possible that uh, just three Gaussians have been used to generate the data. Now, these questions are very subjective I, I, I do not think there is one particular good answer for this. Uh, so, uh, but, uh, but k, k prime is less than k because of this and that is the reason why you have to answer I mean of course, uh, looking at these uh, looking at this probability density one thing is clear that it has not been generated by two Gaussians this this part is clear also it has it is very difficult to get such a distribution if you have five or six Gaussians. So, the answer would either be three or four and given the questions that and given the two questions it is uh, and given the two questions it is clear that uh, the first answer would be four but of course you could also generate the same data using just three Gaussian using a three Gaussian mixture model ok. So, the next question is assume equal pi i for each Gaussian model after convergence in as in question 2. So, in question 2 in question 2 we are assuming k equal to 4 therefore, uh, we are seeing that pi i will be equal to uh, for each Gaussian model after convergence in uh, so equal pi i for all the 4 Gaussian mixtures what would approximately be the pi i's for the model you will get with k prime as in question 3. So, uh, when uh, in question 2 k was equal to 4 and pi i equal is same for all of them therefore, it becomes hello is my screen not visible. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, so the person who said that it is not visible, I think it is a issue from your side. So, you can disconnect and rejoin maybe. Ok, sir. My screen is visible to others, right? Hello, is my screen visible to others? Ok, um, ok, uh, so the where was I? Yeah, so in question 2 k was equal to 4 and uh, you have said that and it has been said that pi i is same for all the four uh, mixtures for all the four Gaussians and therefore, the probability would be um, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25 and 0 0.25 these are the four mixtures I mean these are the four pi 1 up to pi 4 
uh, in question 2 when we had 4 Gaussian mixtures but then you have come down to 3 Gaussian mixtures and uh, so when you have 3 Gaussian mixture that means that 2 of the Gaussians will be merged with each other and therefore just you can just think of these two uh, uh, these two values being merged when k equal to 3 and therefore you will have 0 0.5, 0 0.25, uh, sorry, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.25 and 0 0.25. What does that mean? That just means that in the first case when you had uh, 4 such Gaussians the probability or uh, or so pi 1 was equal to 0 0.25, pi 2 was also equal to 0 0.25, similarly point pi 3 and pi 4 were all equal to 0 0.25. Now, when you have come down to 3 Gaussian mixtures, the one was this, the other was this and the third one was this. So, this becomes, this remains 0.25, this also remains 0.25, these two getting merged is will be more or less close to 0.5. Okay. So, that is the essence of the question that, have been, that has been asked in this uh, particular part. Okay, so now we have another mixture model, uh, another distribution that has been given to us and uh, given in orange the density estimation of GMM is given below based on this answer questions 5 and 6. So, uh, this obviously is a very bad uh, fitting of the data because you see that the most of the data is actually outside the Gaussians. Uh, therefore, what is the problem? There is a problem that is something that we have to that is that something that we notice and uh, so what is the problem that is evident in the image so the first problem is uh, so the, the first option is pi i's are too big uh, so of course that is not a that is uh, not something that is a issue with this because pi i's will only decide which gaussian is uh, which uh, gaussian would be given more preference in generating the data in this case both the gaussians i mean both these gaussians are equally bad in modeling the data and therefore, pi i is being big or small is not a question. The clusters are not sampled from a Gaussian distribution. That is very clear like if you have this cluster let us say this cluster I mean you cannot have points which are being generated from a Gaussian distribution which looks like this Gaussian distribution will have something like this or like this it will have a rounded shape or an elliptical shape. If it is like uh, the like this shape of course, it has not been generated by a Gaussian distribution. So, the second point is probably correct that the clusters are not sampled from the Gaussian distribution and the GMM has not converged yet. Now, the GMM has not converged yet means that uh, with time probably the GMM I mean the Gaussian distributions will model this data correctly. Now, even if you see the, the way the data is distributed, the way to the data has been distributed there can be no Gaussian which is being able to uh, which will be able to uh, model this data very accurately and therefore, the GMM has not converged yet also is not a correct answer. Of course, there is no problem is not a correct answer because we accept that there is a problem most of the data points are outside the two Gaussian distributions. Now, what can be done to get a better fit? Of course, we cannot say that since you have not generated the data from the Gaussian we will not give you uh, I mean we will not fit a Gaussian mixture model to uh, to this particular data and that is where the Gaussian mixture model actually comes into play. You see here the same data this is the same data that is there in the last question k has been increased to 8 now. So, what happens this is one Gaussian this is another Gaussian this is another Gaussian this is another Gaussian. Similarly, for the bottom part we have 4 Gaussians. So, these are the 8 Gaussians that I fit to the next same data and now we see that now the mixture of the Gaussian looks like that it is able to generate it is able to model the data almost perfectly. All the data points are within one of the other Gaussians and therefore, increasing k is actually helping us to solve this problem. So, whenever so that is a common thumb rule. data not fitting GMM properly increase the number of 
number of uh, Gaussians. What this means is that in, in reality most of the data would be generated from distributions other than Gaussian distribution. Uh, Gaussian we work with Gaussian distributions because they are easy to handle we know a lot of results about this particular distribution and therefore, uh, we try to fit a large number of Gaussians so that together they can actually give the distribution that we are hoping for. Uh, therefore, uh, increasing k would actually help. So, that was this question then comes ok I hope I am I am I am making sense to everybody uh, I am just going along because I am not getting any questions ok. So, what does soft clustering mean in GMMs? So, soft this is again directly from the lecture. So, hard clustering means an algorithm like k means where every point is assigned to only one cluster. And you can understand why this is hard because uh, you are saying that this point can belong to cluster 1, there is no chance that this point can belong to cluster 2, 3, 4, 5 whatever. So, that is where the hardness concept comes from. So, soft means this assigned to only one cluster, cluster is something that you do away with. You now say that samples will be assigned to cluster 1 with a probability of 0.2 will be assigned to cluster 2 with a probability of 0.5 and will be assigned to cluster 3 with a probability of 0.3. So, that is the soft that that is what is meant by soft clustering. So, there may be samples that are outside any cluster boundary is does not make any sense. The updates during maximum likelihood are taken in small steps also I mean this is not soft clustering it restricts the underlying distribution to be a Gaussian. So, whenever you have GMMs, hard clustering or soft clustering, it will always be a Gaussian and samples are assigned probabilities of belonging to a cluster. So, this is the correct answer. Uh, then we have a question from the EM algorithm. This is directly from again the directly from the lecture. So, what is the update for pi k in EM algorithm? So, if you remember, it would be the response. it would be the responsibility that is calculated at m minus 1th step divided by the total number of points. So, that is uh, calcul that is shown in this particular formula you calculate the responsibility of the gamma z and k. Uh, that is the what is the probability that this point is uh, assigned to one particular cluster and uh, you calculate that based on the parameters that you have calculated in the last step divide that by the total number of points that gives you pi k of m. Uh, the next one had a typo. So, I have corrected that k means is a special case of GMM with the following properties and uh, this is again this is directly from the lecture. So, the two points would be first of all k means would have. So, k means is hard clustering right. So, whenever k means has hard, hard clustering it comes out uh, I mean in the EM algorithm update if you look at k means you would understand that covariance would be uh, uh, an identity matrix and epsilon would actually be small and pi k equal to 1 by k. So, that the the, the mixture the probability mix the, pro, the, the coefficients or the pro, or the or the mixture coefficients for the different uh, mixture mod or for the different Gaussian distributions that you are using to model the data all of them will be equiprobable with a probability of 1 by k. Okay, I hope uh, so that brings me to the end of this uh, different questions these were th the questions that were there in the last assignment uh, in the last year's assignment. So, now if you have any questions you can ask me uh, yeah you can go ahead and ask me your questions.
if you have no questions then i'll just close the session uh, so if you have any questions you can ask me that means uh, this is clear to everybody okay then i'll close the session i don't find any reason for staying back with uh, no questions and also me not answering any so thank you we'll meet again next uh, saturday same time Uh, no, Sandeep, I can't uh, share my email. Sorry for that. Thank you.